Hi everyone, welcome to Simplicity TV. I am Jen Pike, your host. This is the third installment of a four part series that I am offering to you all to help to teach you more about the four individual phases of your menstrual cycle. So we've learned about the follicular phase, which that phase typically lasts anywhere from about seven to 10 days, depending on the woman, her rhythm and her body. Ovulatory is anywhere from three to four days, the cycle leading up to it, the actual process of ovulation, and then coming on the other side. And on the other side of that is our third phase, which is the luteal phase. And this tends to be the longest, anywhere from 10 to 14 days. Again, it really depends on the woman. And this is why I think this information is so important to you. You are not your girlfriend's cycle. You are not your daughter's cycle, your mom's cycle, your sister's cycle your coworkers, you have your own individual rhythms. And until you can start to get yourself in alignment with your rhythm, you are going to be more vulnerable and susceptible to the signs and symptoms and issues that other women are dealing with. You have to take that power back into yourself. And what I mean by that is you might live in a household where like, it's very common for mothers, daughters, and sisters to all cycle around the same time. It doesn't mean everyone has the exact same cycle. What's happening within each phase of their cycle, how long each phase is lasting, that's gonna be very individual for each of them. So important to pay attention. Now in this longest part of our actual um, cycle of phases, this is when you're gonna start to feel your body kind of grounding down a little bit. So that first half of our cycle, higher energy, higher motivation, higher cognition. The beginning part of the luteal phase, like just after ovulation, still fairly good. I would say on an energy perspective, this is when you are maybe not overbooking your schedule, you're giving yourself a little bit more grace and flow space and time. It's maybe where you're shifting out of the higher intensity exercise five or six days a week and maybe only doing that two to max three days a week. It's where yoga is becoming something that is in there more often, walks outside in nature and fresh air, um, Pilates as well too. So you're just really changing up the structure of what you're providing your body. Your body is not meant to be doing full intensity exercise every single day. This is where I see a lot of women get stuck in the trap of halting body changes, of impeding their adrenal and thyroid health, therefore impacting the health and integrity of their cycle. So from a food perspective, that luteal phase, your body is going to start to wanna ask you now for the sweets, for the salt, for all of those foods that are your cravings that you feel like anchor you at this time of the month, but are really just further unstabilizing you and kind of like, I describe it as a hot air balloon without that, that weight. It's like if you were to just hold a hot air balloon and let it go, it's like up, up and away. That's what happens to unstable blood sugar. And you overall, your mood gets crappy, you're snappy, you don't have the patience, you know, your energy is just scattered all over the place. And so we tend to refer to this as being PMS. Oh, it's just coming into that time of the month. I'm gonna get my period in a week or a bit. And we just slough it off as like, that's just the way it is and who cares? I'm gonna encourage you to flip that mindset and that energy around. So for your food, fiber, fat, protein and a little bit more carbohydrate around this period of time. I'd be looking at like, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 to 150 grams of carbohydrates. Again, I don't know your activity level, but I'll give you an example. So for me, I am, I work out every day. So I move my body seven days a week. I don't do intense stuff seven days a week. And in fact, coming into this time of my cycle, I try and pull back on the intensity as much as possible. So I won't do something like CrossFit, I will do something like lift weights, but I'll maybe do lighter weights, more repetition, or if I'm gonna do heavier, I do fewer amount of repetitions and maybe a few more sets. But I honestly just wake up and intuitively, what does my body feel like today? Do I need to unroll the yoga mat? Do I need to go for a walk? I'm gonna move every day because you need this, ladies. You have to be moving your body. But I worry less about what I'm doing in that period of time just more so the fact that I'm moving. You also wanna pay attention to your recovery. If you're sore longer, if you find, especially the week coming into your cycle and more so three to five days that your back is achy, your hips are achy, 
your SI joints are giving you some problems, your sacrum, do you think that this sounds like a good time to go and do a heavy back squat, a front squat, you know, 100 walking lunges to be doing those types of things? 100% no. That's when you would pull away from those, do something a little bit more uh, gentle for your body, but really pay attention. Like that's when you can hurt yourself. When you know you can feel that you shouldn't be going hard, but your program that your trainer wrote for you says that you're supposed to be doing something challenging. You know, the workout of the day that was posted is supposed to be challenging, or you just can't give yourself permission to settle down and to pull back because you're afraid you're gonna gain weight. If you can just trust me to know that in these days leading into your cycle, if you can pull back and just decrease your intensity, that this is actually gonna help you towards your weight loss goal, your hormone balancing goal, your energy goal, your mood goal, give me a couple of months of just listening and doing this and I promise you're gonna see it on the other side. Now, the other thing is at this time, this is when I would be incorporating the evening primrose oil, the sesame or the sunflower seeds for that seed cycling phase of things. I'd also be bringing in the Vitex, the chase berry, to help to keep a healthy length of that luteal phase and to help to promote healthy, strong progesterone. I'd be avoiding a lot of the sugary traps. So if I knew I was craving chocolate, then maybe I'll go buy chocolate, but it's gonna be really high, good quality. Giddy Yo-Yo, Alter Eco, you know, some different brands like that. If I would know that my stress tends to get higher coming into this period of time, and this is maybe where you drink more wine, I am gonna have things like water kefir, kombucha, those types of things. I'm gonna have a conversation with my spouse and be like, look, this is normally when I would wanna have a couple of glasses of wine. I really need you to keep me accountable and remind me why I'm not gonna do that. Because the more wine I have, the harder my period's gonna be, the heavier it's gonna be, my breast tenderness is gonna go up, you know, my mood is gonna be really crappy, and I won't be able to stop myself from eating those things. So you have to step back and just know, know you. Like you're different from me, I'm different from you. So what makes you tick? If you tell me that your family wants you to move out or they wanna move out the week leading into your cycle, we might be laughing about it right now, but that's not okay. And that is a big indicator, ladies, that something is out of whack. And this can show up down the road. This can show up as an autoimmune illness. This can show up as a estrogen dominant form of cancer. I'm not saying these things lightly. I'm telling you what I have seen and what I continue to see happening. It'll rock your perimenopause and menopause phase of life and postmenopausal if you don't connect to these things now and you don't start to take charge. For your young girls, if they're having these issues leading into their cycle, they're gonna be recommended to go onto the pill. They're gonna miss lots of days of school. They're gonna be embarrassed. They're going to probably put more weight on than their body really should be. They're going to have larger breast size. They're gonna have all these different things happening. Their skin is gonna break out. And we think that this is like these massive changes we have to make. If you can start to just understand each of these phases and know, okay, this week we just wanna shift our energy a little bit. In the beginning, sometimes you don't actually have to do anything I'm telling you do, you just have to be aware I'm in a different phase. I just need to be a little kinder with my body this week. I need to have a few you know, less things on the calendar. I need to drink more water. I just need to remember to take my supplements. I don't have to add anything new. I just need to do those things. I need to say no more often. I need to get to bed a bit earlier, maybe hunker down and watch a Netflix. Like, do the thing your body's craving, not the thing the outside world is telling you that you have to do. Um, and I think that's it for this phase. I don't wanna go much deeper than that. I would give you those type of tips. But what I would say is if you haven't already, go back and listen to the full masterclass that I did on the cycle syncing and your fertility awareness. It's just gonna lay this out in such a fluid way for you and a deeper way of understanding because I'm not here educating you on this and explaining it to you to try to scare you. I'm, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to like sit up a little taller and open your eyes and to stop scrolling on your phone while you're simultaneously listening to this and to really pay attention because the solutions you're looking for, they live in you, not outside of you. And until you can get to that place where you're really connected to what your body is trying to communicate, you will feel like you are chasing after the next solution, the next program, the next person to try to fix what you really have the ability to do within your own body. You just need a little shift of education and just a new platform for yourself. 
All right, so I'm gonna leave you there with that this week. Next week, we'll be heading into your menstrual phase, which I'm gonna teach you to fully love on and not hate and talk bad about because your period is a superpower and it's a gift and I want you all to get to that place. So join me back here next week. And until then, wishing you more simplicity and more ease.